My name is Garrett Shimizu, and I came here because my grandmother was interned in uh, Roar, Arkansas, and I think one of the biggest things that stood out to me was seeing my last name on the 10,000 names that were here. Even though I wasn't related, it stood out to me because I realized that my name could have been on there because of the fact that I'm half Japanese. And even though I, my whole life I wasn't treated as one, I still could have been just as much the same. And it made me understand the Japanese knowing that they were American citizens and being put in here. It really stood out to me. Um, this is my first time here at Manzanar, and it's interesting to compare the two camps. This one, of course, is much bigger. And it's got much more trees, greeneries, and that kind of stuff. Um, this particular pilgrimage, I've been on other pilgrimages to Topaz, but this one, uh, it seems like there's a lot of youth, a lot of youth, and I'm, I'm glad to see that. Because that way, uh, you know, um, we can pass our stories on. I wanted to come on this pilgrimage to pay respect and honor to the Nisei folks who have been here, who have really been my family, although not biologically related. I feel like they've really nurtured me and formed a lot of my sentiments and ways of looking at the world, and I really admire them a lot, and so I wanted to come to pay respect. I grew up with, with animosity towards Japanese people when I became politicized as a Filipino-American because of um, the Japanese occupation in the Philippines and um, I wanted to be able to kind of heal that and be able to build community and be in solidarity with other folks because um, it just um, just how messy war is and how it affects everybody it's very complex and it isn't as easy as like putting blame on one person or another group of people just because your own suffer. I guess part of my motivation for coming is um, I just haven't had a lot of Asian American history in the past and so it was kind of learning um, some new things that really got me thinking about um, sort of what are my connections as a Chinese American to sort of my you know Japanese brothers and sisters and I really came here with that desire to sort of see you know begin to think about what those connections are. One of the things I did was just this interfaith thing that happened right now. Um, it was really important for me to see different um, people with different beliefs coming together and honoring the lives of the people here. And um, it's just amazing to me how how there are different there are so many different ways that people have experienced life here, and at the same time there are so many different ways that people experience God and just. Um, being able to see that um, people don't have to hold those things against each other anymore. So. I guess one of the things that um, it came up for me when I was walking through the interpretive center today was um, just sort of how strongly I felt um, I identified with this um, with the Issei um, in terms of being an immigrant to this country. Um, I'm a first and a half generation immigrant, so I came over when I was a teenager. And um, just sort of this feeling of not being fully home in either place, but having chosen a place, or my family having a chosen a place, and kind of um, just sort of, I'm not really sure what yet to think about, but it was just amazing to me how much, um, it was just a visceral reaction. It's like, I get what you mean, I get what people, when people sort of doubt, oh, are you American? And even sort of thinking about, maybe they say, maybe they were thinking, maybe I don't, you know, maybe I don't want to be part of this America. Um, and having those mixed feelings.
our own people. And then we crucified them. We put them in prison and they suffered. The stories that I heard from Paz and Doru about the heat and the freezing cold and being split from family and it was a real suffering. But the hope I see in that is that because of their suffering, I am more free. Because they've told their stories to us, we are more free. stories from the people who sort of um, suffered uh, I think it's always it's it's hard when when you fight for something and everybody's silent or everybody just died so I think that we there's an urgency to um, listen to the stories of the people who sort of you know who's been bombed you know who suffered in the war 